In this video, we're going to go over how to program a Metiphone using Parameter Editor. So in the top left corner of the screen, click on Read, and click on OK in the middle. This version area up here, leave all that blank. You don't need to bother with that. GPRS settings. The default is Telstra for uh, using an Aldi card or a standard Telstra SIM. If you wanted Optus, you would type in Optus right there and then click on Set. The APN for Optus is Yes Internet. And then you would click on Set if you were to make the change. We'll leave it here with Telstra for now. Ignore the rest of that. Moving down here to phone number settings. Let's say, for example, you're going to program the first person as um, having that number with that name. You'll notice that you'll want to put, uh, and it doesn't all have to be capitals, it can be lowercase like that. So you enter the phone number, comma, the person's name, click on set. Next one, let's say it's a landline. So we'll do that one and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And we'll click the person's name as Sally and set. Now, let's say that they only had two contacts and they also want a triple zero. Each of these two have to press button one on their phone keypad when their phone rings to be able to continue the conversation with the, con with the user. If these contacts do not press button one within 25 to 30 seconds, they'll automatically get disconnected and it'll move on to the next caller. Um, once they do press one, then they have an unlimited amount of time and it also signals to the device no need to call anyone else. Now, if they want triple zero, it doesn't go as number three. It goes down here as number eight. The reason is contact eight is the only one that does not have to press button one on their keypad. They automatically get an unlimited amount of time. The reason is uh, triple, the triple zero operator won't know what's going on about this device and doesn't have the facility to press uh, a button on a keypad as a... Uh, as a contact does on their mobile phone. So we would set that just like that. Moving on here to mode setting. These are all the default settings, but we'll briefly go over them with you. Call in two-way. This means they can both talk. Leave that in place. GPS, the on refers to uh, a power saving mode. So you get GPS, but it only activates when on, uh, when on demand. In other words, if, for example, the SOS is pressed, it sends the GPS location out, or if a contact wants to find it, they would text the letter F for find, and they would get the GPS location. So it accesses it, but it's on only when uh, required and off the rest of the time. If you wanted it on all the time, you would click that one, but we highly recommend this not be used because it, it drains a lot more battery. It's only something that would be used when uh, using with the tracking platform, which we don't recommend doing. So we'll leave that off for now. SOS call out. This is the default because the device uh, makes a call and then sends a text after the call. That's what's in place as the default setting, so leave that in place as well. Uh, call one way. I wouldn't bother with this one. GPRS savings. The default is that it's on. Really doesn't matter whether it's on or off because we're not using GPRS anyway. Now, anyone can call in. The, de the default is that Anyone can call, just like a regular mobile phone, if the user wanted only the emergency contacts, like Tom, Sally, and Triple Zero to be able to call, then you would turn that off and click Set. This means that only these can call in, no one else. If anyone tries to call in, they're not going to be able to get through. The default is that uh, when the, uh, any of these three call the device, the phone will automatically answer after one ring. If the user wanted to be able to press the button to answer, then we would tick that and click set. Now, uh, it doesn't auto answer. The user has to press the button. Uh, all these settings I'd leave in place. Uh, just briefly, what this has to do with the 10 seconds refers to the amount of time that the screen shows uh, whatever's on the screen, like the power battery, uh, battery power remaining, the cell signal strength, the date, the time, all that goes on for 10 seconds when any pressing, pressing any button on the Metiphone. Uh, if you wanted to change that, make it on shorter or less, this is where you do that. Uh, this is the orientation for how the uh, screen reads, whether it's right side up, upside down, or it automatically uh, changes with the orientation of the device. Leave it on the auto setting. Uh, that doesn't need to be changed. Time zone. 
When there's a SIM card in the device, it automatically finds whatever time zone the unit is in. Uh, if you wanted to auto manually set it, right now it's set for uh, 08 because that's the uh, um, time zone that it is in China. also happens to be the same time zone where we are here in Western Australia. If you were to change it for Queensland, you would make it plus 10. Oops. <laughs> and set like that um, to make it set for Queensland. Um, leave all these in place. Uh, if you wanted to change the low battery, the default for the low battery is that it's on. This means it's going to send a low battery text to emergency contact number one. If the user is pretty good to charge the device, well, you can leave the low battery off and uh, then contact one does not get a text to remind the user. Uh, this can also be changed uh, down to 10%, anything up to 45%. Um, 20% is a, a good one to leave in place like that, but it's off now anyway, so there's no text going to be sent. Leave all this in place now. This re has re reference to the uh, fall detection. So by default, the fall detection is on. If the fall detection were to be switched off, you'd make it triple zero and click that, which now makes the fall detection off. It does have the capacity to set geofence um, settings, but we've tested that and we don't feel that the geofence is as good as it is on some other devices. So we don't support geofence with this particular unit. Um, if you want to play with it, uh, this is where you do it. And uh, yeah, now there's a lot of things that the uh, Metiphone can do that you can't program here. For example, let's say a user wanted only texts to be sent instead of a call to be sent when the SOS is pressed. Well, where you would set that is up in here. So you would enter set all in caps and then uh, you would program in this particular case you'd have to look at the programming codes uh, document to see that the text to send is Q1 comma zero. And then by clicking set send what that's going to do is, oops, we click up here and then send and then that uh, makes it so that uh, now when the SOS is pressed, it's only going to send a text to the contacts instead of actually call them so that they then have to call the user to find out what's going on. So this is where you would text any codes or send any codes. I shouldn't say text because this is being done on a computer, but these make permanent um, settings in the device. If you want to do this remotely, well, then you would send Q1, comma zero. You would text that to the device, and you could have that setting in programmed in remotely. But if you want to actually program it in the device without sending a text, this is where you do it. That's pretty much it. If you have any other questions, give us a call. Thanks for listening.